Hello there, and today I'm gonna to be showing you seven absolutely insane, absolutely insane coding tools that I bet you don't know about yet. I'm about to show you how you can find amazing styles really easily, how you can automate your React development with pre-built components and many other things to replace boring everyday tasks that you're probably doing in your computer every single day, including one tool that I think is so revolutionary. That I think it's gonna completely transform the way we use our computers in general. Like how about this? If after watching this video, none of these tools were new to you in any way, I'm gonna give you permission to dislike this video. It's not easy for me to say, and in return, if you did find something interesting in this video, you have to hit the like button. Is that a deal? Okay, let's do it. I've got some dates to munch on while we watch this video. I encourage you to grab something as well, like a coffee or a snack or whatever. And let's start nerding out about our programming tools. Our first tool is called Figma. And this is for those of you who, like me, hate doing CSS. Figma is essentially this design tool that allows you to do things like design and diagrams for your app. But the way that I really use Figma and the way that it's used in the programming industry is to find styles for your apps. Essentially the way this works is you've got these designs that have been designed by someone and then by clicking on different areas, you can view things like the exact colors and you can even extract the entire styles as CSS. But then you can simply just copy and paste into your app. I think it's absolutely sick. There's tons and tons of these available in here and you can sort them by free if you don't wanna pay for them. And then essentially just find insane styles because as a developer, you're not supposed to be a designer. Leave the designing for the designers and spend more time coding, less time designing. Okay, so continuing on the theme of being lazy as developers, we have something called a React Suite. What this is, is basically a library of pre-built React components that you can just copy paste into your app. Let's say I'm building this amazing app right here and I want it to have a nav bar, so I can just go out here in React Suite and look for a nav bar that I can simply like copy paste and now we have a nav bar. Let's say we want to add a button, so we just copy this button component and change it a bit, we style it, and then like there's so many of these. Like let's say we want to add like a calendar view. We can just find this component in here and stick it in our app and with literally no coding, we've got this amazing starting point. Now obviously, this is not something that you can use to build an entire application, but these are pre-built components that you can like stitch together to build whatever you wanna build and then modify them from there. Okay, so if you're into data science and you like using Python and you like playing around with data and things like this, you wanna listen very carefully to this one because we've got this app called Quadratic, who are also the sponsor of today's video. What this is, is essentially a combination of Excel with Python. We've got this data set in here of pricing data for apartments in Dubai. Whereas normally in Excel, it allows you to input Excel functions. With Quadratic, you can add Python functions. And the most useful functions for you to know more about are this function called cell, which allows you to access a specific cell or cells where you can input two cells. The app basically returns a pandas data frame of the range of cells from the first one to the second one. And the really cool thing is that we've got this AI assistant built into the application. And again, if you're a dumbass like me and you don't know how to work with pandas, you can just ask the AI assistant to help you, which I did here. And I managed to get this function where I can count the number of areas that would be within my budget. Let's say my budget is 1500. And then I can combine this by actually making this dynamic by allowing me to change the budget on this cell right here. And then I use the cell function to just access the budget data in my function. If you are someone who loves working with data, like I think this is the future. I'm super, super excited about where it's gonna go. I highly recommend you go check it out at quadratichq.com, which you can also find below in the description. Thank you for Quadratic for sponsoring this video and introducing me to this pretty amazing tool. Okay, so for the next one, backend developers, listen up. Usually whenever you wanna build a backend, usually what you have to do is go and actually also build a frontend, like a full frontend that calls the backend just to test it out, which can be really tedious because then you have to remember like, oh, how do you use this fetch function again? And like, there's gonna be errors, there's gonna be cores, like all these pieces that you have to get to work together. It's a whole mess if you're trying to like just test out your backend. So using this app called Postman, you can essentially automate this process and just send client requests directly from Postman. So I've got a very simple Node.js server running right here. And then all I have to do is inside of Postman, input the port where my server is running and the endpoint is gonna send a request to that endpoint without me having to manually build out the whole client. It's gonna show the response 
and then inside of my server, I can see like, yes, it works. And then if you wanna include query parameters or a body inside a request, you can also just simply do that inside of Postman rather than just having manually build everything in your client. I think it's pretty cool. I use it all the time for my backend development. On to app number five, which is gonna be especially relevant for those of you who are still learning to code and you sort of wanna take notes, but you sort of think like, oh, taking notes is tedious, it's boring, I don't like doing it. Well, I have a solution for you. What if I told you that there's now a way to write out your notes automatically using AI? There is, it's called Notion AI. So I've talked about Notion a bunch in my previous videos. I'm actually building like a fully fledged Notion template specifically for programmers. Stay tuned for that. But anyway, let's say you have this note in here. You can't be bothered to like write it out because that's a, that's work. We don't want to be doing work, do we? Once you sign up the Notion AI, what you can do is just click the space button and it's going to open this AI prompt for you. This just allows you to, for example, we want to tell it to summarize web development or explain web development for us. And it's just gonna literally do it for us. It's gonna write you essentially a whole article about web development. And if you're not satisfied with it, you can either tell it to do it again, or you can just tell it to keep writing. What else can we do? Let's say we wanna learn about HTTP requests and we wanna at the same time learn about it and summarize it. So we can just tell Notion AI, just please summarize this HTTP request for us. And it's gonna write these entire articles for us with code snippets like in between, because in Notion you can write code as well and then let's say you already have existing course notes or something like that and you would like to summarize it you can go to those notes and ask notion ai to basically summarize the entire page for you and last but not least you can even use it to literally translate the entire page into spanish and freaking look it just keeps going yeah i don't know why you want to do that but if you do then there you go you can do it I feel like going forward, pretty much every single piece of software is gonna have some sort of an AI like writer thing built into it. Just like the next thing that we're talking about, which is a brand new way to use your terminal. And this one is absolutely incredible. So we all know that as programmers, we usually wanna use the terminal over like the GUI, but at the same time, like, let's be honest, we can never really remember all the commands, but learning all these commands is effort. And like the terminal window is really looks like freaking 1995. It's not something that we really want to be using, but now we have a solution. It's called Warp. This guys have essentially done is completely rebuilt the terminal for us. It's a much more visual, much more like 2023 kind of terminal. For example, have autocomplete built in. Let's say we go CD and then flick through the different folders and essentially navigate to wherever you want. And then it's going to basically be built using these blocks where we have these blocks of commands and then we can do different things for this block. So we can click on here and we can copy the commands. We can copy a path, uh, create a permanent link. Uh, and then as you would expect, we have warp AI. <laughs> that is a complete lifesaver for me because I can never remember the terminal commands myself. So I can just ask warp AI, okay, how do I do this? And it's just gonna give you a command for it that you can either copy or simply directly input into your command line window. And then we've got this command palette, which is basically similar to the command palette of like Visual Studio Code. This is essentially like a code editor built into the terminal window. That's like the best way that I have to describe this. It basically adds a lot of color. And the last thing that I really love about this, is you can change the theme. All you have all these different themes, you can make it white, you can make like really hacky looking, whatever. Like, yeah, basically just make your terminal look like less 1995, basically. So I think this is absolutely sick and I, genuinely believe that once this becomes more mainstream, like no one's basically going to be using the normal terminal. Like why would you use the normal terminal anymore after something like this? Make the terminal great again. Last but not least, we have something that you probably know about unless you've been living under an absolute rock, which is obviously ChatGPT. But I bet that if you're using ChatGPT, you're not using it in the right way. Whenever I'm building something new, I basically never create like skeletons for my apps myself anymore. Okay, so here it's giving me this video player, but let's say what I actually wanted is something like a YouTube video player where it gives me a YouTube video to watch. And then I can ask ChatGPT to modify, please give me a YouTube video player instead. And then it's gonna do that and I'm gonna test if it works. Me as the human, I am the architect. I'm the one like giving the instructions, I'm the boss. And then ChatGPT is basically just gonna be my free employee that actually does the coding 
thing for me. So going forward, there's less and less need for you to be the kind of coder who just like memorizes a bunch of stuff, which is amazing because it allows us to spend our time on more creative things. And in general, that's what technology does. It allows us humans to work on more creative tasks. And look at that, it works. It finds an internet make coder video for us and it even randomizes it to down every refresh. There's a different internet make coder video showing up and all of this came from JGPT, but it doesn't mean that I have now been replaced because I still had to have the idea of building this absolutely ridiculously amazing app that's gonna like make me a billionaire. We have to come up with the ideas, we have to come up with the requirements, but now we can literally just do everything like 100 times faster because we don't have to spend the time coding everything from scratch and using all of these tools, using React components, optimizing your styling, your data designs, everything, we can massively speed up our workflows as developers. I'm curious, tell me in the comments, how many of these did you already know about? And also tell me, what are your favorite coding tools? Let's help each other here. Let's all write our favorite coding tools that we don't think the rest of the commenters are gonna be aware of. And I'm gonna be pinning my favorite comment with a favorite tool. But the truth of it is that this is not enough for you as a programmer. There's a whole other set of tools that you really, really need as a programmer. If you wanna find out what all the physical tools that I use in my own personal software engineer life, you absolutely need to watch this video right here. If you find nothing useful in this video, you can dislike it, but I bet you're gonna find something. So watch it now.